Okay. All right. What is up? Welcome back, Andrew. How you doing, bro? I'm good, my friend. How are you? Good, good. We, um, you know, we talk on and off from time to time, almost all the time about cars. And I was thinking before I did this, we, we need to like carve out a good hour to just chop it up on, on cars and supercars and the life around that. I think that might be a fun talk one day. Absolutely. We certainly do. I mean, I, it really is the best thing to do with money. People always say to me, you know, I started off with nothing and now I got a bit of money and they're like, oh, you got this money now. Like what, what's, the, you know, you're doing, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I'm like, nope, I want to drive cars. The rest of it is garbage. <laughs> the rest yeah. of it is not even fun. Yeah, this is, this is very true. So um, for those of you guys just tuning in right now, uh, do me a big solid. I'm going to grab the link. Uh, if you're watching this live somewhere else, uh, come over and join us on YouTube. I'll drop the link there. So if you're on Facebook, Flatter, Twitch, whatever, just click that. Come on over. Hit the like button for the algorithms. Just helps me out. Um, today we're going to be talking about. Well, I think this is an interesting one because um, I had something else scheduled, but I'd push it off to next week due to a reschedule. And I wanted to cover something on you know sharpening the mind sort of thing. And you had a bit of a Twitter beef um, earlier this week with uh, Colty Bra, um, and I follow both. Colton you guys, Dobson. I'm Yes. And Born I follow- in June 1992, <laughs> lives in Huntington Beach, California. Yeah. Colton Dobson. All right, all right, all right. Cool. <laughs> cool the Jets a bit. But I mean, like, I, I've, um, you know, I followed the both of you, you know, for a while. And I thought that it was interesting watching that unfold. Um, and I think this is probably a better way to cover the topic. And I've, it, and I've got a personal story too that I want to share. I'll leave that towards the end because it's around um, something on this topic of, of sharpening the mind. But I know that a lot of people have, have come to this for, you know, their dose of red meat. So let's give them the drama and the red meat. Um, why don't you tell them how this how this spat unfolded and how it came to a conclusion? And just just a heads up, guys, my cleaners are late. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to step away for like 10 seconds just to make sure they don't come in here because they're Portuguese and they don't understand English too good. So if I mute my, my, my audio and turn off the camera, that's why. Go ahead. Right. So, uh, yeah, this is a long story. And there they this, are. So I'll be right back. So carry on. No problem. This this Twitter artist, he's been around for a while. I think anyone who's in the Twitter space has probably seen him. He takes to take, likes to take shots at people. He's been around for a while. And he had a few digs at me two or three years ago, and I largely ignored him. Because I don't believe in, in half measures, right? I either completely ignore somebody or I aim to, destro- to destroy them. It turns out he's a cocaine addict. He gets high in front of his computer, and he likes to start beefs for clout. And one day I had a little bit of time for him, which was three or four days ago. I had some spare time and I decided to destroy his brand and do my absolute best to wreck his life. And luckily he capitulated and showed the world he was a coward before I really managed to even get started. I mean, we were only 24 hours in. Uh, so the, the real fun and games didn't even start. But I think he realized that, you know, there's some people on the Internet who talk and there's some people on the Internet who talk and, and do something else. What, what, so, he, sorry, so I... So I missed the start. So forgive me, guys. But what was it that like? Why would he want to pick a fight with a champion kickboxer? Like, where did that come but from? The, because because that's clout, right? This is the thing that's amazing to me about this whole spat. When this whole thing started, everyone started saying, "Oh, tight, Colty's going to fight Tate." He was never going to fight me. He was never going to fight me. I, 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 it's amazing to me that people were pretending there was ever a chance, even one percent chance, he was going to show up and fight me. Of course not. You've had he this happen a few times, and then though. Right? The fighter. Sorry. You've had this happen a few times, though. Like a few people have. have... Oh, it happens all the time, all okay. the time. Yeah. But I mean, this is the first time that I've seen that somebody good. that actually like claims to be like an MMA combatant, like somebody that's had fights. Listen, if if two people want to fight, trust me, I've been in their cage in the ring enough times. No, if two people want to fight, it doesn't take long to organize. Okay. It certainly doesn't take you know a whole bunch of talking, a whole bunch of back and forth, and this guy's talking garbage and saying he's going to fight me and this that. He's just trying to he's trying to get status, and it's amazing to me that I actually lost a little bit of faith in the rotting corpse of the masculine side of Twitter as it is that these people are sitting there pretending there was ever a chance it was even going to happen. There's people sitting there going, this is going to be a good fight. Like, are you out of your mind? This guy's talking crap for clout. You're giving him attention for no reason. He doesn't deserve it. He has no intention of fighting me. And I, and they wait and enough people tagged me and wasted enough of my life reading it. I thought, you know, I'm going to have to dedicate 36 hours to wrecking this fool. This is it's insanity. So, so the challenge came up. And then why weren't you able to follow through to get the fight booked and then take the deposits and set up the event? Like what happened from there? So he said he'd fight me. I said, no problem. Here's a contract. And he went silent, just disappeared. 
He just because goes that was do. his intention all along to pretend he was going to fight and then not sign a contract and not fight. So then I put fifty thousand dollars in escrow. I was like, look, you're not going to now sign a contract and then not turn up. You're not going to waste even more of everybody's time. So I put fifty thousand dollars in escrow instantly. Once again, put it on Twitter. He started slow replying, slow replying, slow replying. And at this point, I understood that he has no intention of fighting me, but he's wasted my time and he said my name. So he has to pay a price one way or another. And that's when I took a little bit of time out of my life and instigated a campaign against his entire family. I intended on litigating his bloodline into eternal poverty. And I would do exactly that. I would do exactly that with a smile on my face. People don't understand, right? I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm bored, but I certainly miss war. Let's put it that way. You're going to give me a reason. If you're going to annoy me enough to go out of my way, I will spend 10 hours a day every single day for the rest of my human years inconveniencing you. I will do that. And I will sit and laugh with my brother from the seat of my private plane. I don't care if it costs me $100 to take one from you. I'll do that trade all day and we'll see who runs out of money first. I'm that guy. So when he decided to finally keep saying my name to the point where I was like, okay, we're going to fight. Then I realized it was all just a lie. He's not even going to give me the honor. He's not going to give, he's like, he doesn't have enough honor as a man to turn up. I want the glory. I want to smash his face in. He ain't going to give me the chance. Well, then I have to ruin his life, don't I? What else am I supposed to do? So I, I, I began a campaign. What was the, um, what was the initial beef with you? Like he just, he just started running his mouth about how you weren't what you said you were or like, where did it come from? Yeah, I think the lowest and easiest. You probably because I mean it was yourself. convenient that it got tied around the time that 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 you started posting about the Bugatti and it ended up on the Bugatti website with your yeah. uh, name embroidered on the headrest. Yeah, I think you you'll know this as well yourself. The easiest way to try and clout chase is to find somebody of high status and attack them. Right. That's all it is. I mean, you you probably get this yourself, right? If you're a nobody and you want some clout, you find somebody of high status and you run your mouth. So I mean, I'm out there. He just, I guess he just decided me. I don't know why he'd pick me. I actually like to think that I, I I'm not going to, I mean, nobody's scared of anybody on Twitter or the internet, right? But I like to think that there's enough about me. He should have known what was going to happen. He should have known I was going to do something about it. I don't know why he was he's ignorant, drunk, high, stupid, autistic. Not sure which one he is. Probably a combination of them all. But he just wants some clout, right? And, and in general, I don't have that many haters online. I don't have that many. So I guess he thought he'd be unique and be the one who wants to run his mouth to me and look like a tough guy. You do and get hate, though. Like, I noticed a lot of the exchanges back and forth. There's a lot of people that, that I don't know what kind of language they think that is necessary to use, but they certainly pick their favorite guy, right? Like, everybody's got their favorite fighter, you know, if there's a fight. Like, you know, there's, you know, like, there's people that are going to side with Tate. There's people that are going to side with this opponent sort of thing right yep. and you know they get in the you know they get into the uh the emotion the energy like the whole you know scenario of the whole thing and then it just kind of collapses on itself and implodes but now the part that i wanted to get to was um how winners win right because i mean you've been up against this i'm sure your entire life i mean you're a guy that came from no one you started kickboxing uh i've seen your record we've talked before you're clearly who who you say you are um you know, there's a first like initial moment when I came across, you know, Andrew Tate on Twitter. And I was like, who is this guy? He's, you know, he's loud. He's boisterous. He's very confident. You know, he's these are really full of shit or he really is who he says, you know, he is. And it took me a while yeah. to figure it out. Right. And obviously, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've made my conclusion on that. But, um, you know, then you went like full, full on on him on him. Like you were talking about, you know, you got his family involved. I think you mentioned his Absolutely. parents' name. Well, well, I certainly got his family involved. All of them. What all was the of them. With they that? birthed scum, Richard. They will pay. You know, I, <laughs> how, did you, listen, how did you manage to include his family in a lawsuit? Like, like how would they be involved with him running his mouth on Twitter? That's the part that I'm trying to connect the dots on. They birthed scum and they will pay the price. Listen, th here's the thing about winning in life. There's no such thing as Rambo. Everyone has this idea of this lone cat Rambo kind of thing. The most dangerous people in the world are people with networks. They're people who know people. And, and, and there's people with liquid wealth. Listen, I'm part of networks and groups. I'm part of organizations where I can drop a $20,000 prize and say, this Twitter tag, 20 grand with ideas and information that's going to destroy his life. It took, that's all I did. It took three minutes. I had his name, his address, his dad's job. His sister's bra size, you name it. I had all of it. It was done. It took three 
three minutes. And from there, that many like, people okay. sold them out, eh? Oh, everybody saw. It. No, there's no such thing as anonymity. That's the thing I don't understand about the yeah. internet. You put your face, you you put your face out there. I put my face out there. A lot of guys. Yeah, I are put out my there real face. face, my real name out there. Like we're one of the few that actually do that here. Exactly, and people are out there trying to hide, but you can't even hide. You can't hide in this world. It took all of three minutes to get all the information. And as for litigating his parents, listen, I don't. I'll say this right here, right now, and I don't care because I might still litigate them. And I'll still say this: I don't need a reason. You're going to have to defend yourself. Regardless, that's the thing about the American legal system. You cannot ignore it. I don't care if it costs me a million dollars to, to take a thousand dollars out of your bank. You're going to be in court twice a month for the rest of your human years. I don't care. I will sue you for any and every reason forever. And you're going to have to hire lawyers and turn up forever. I'll do that. I'm that guy. I'm petty. I'm petty and I've got a lot of money and a lot of time. So it's not even about guilty. It's not about why. It's just about because I can. It's one of many, many things I was going to do. I'd buy the property next to his father's Airbnb and list it for free. I will bankrupt you. You don't understand the levels I will go to. I'm that guy. And the guy, and, and he, as soon as he could feel it, and he felt it because people turned up at his door. Once I had his address, I started putting, I didn't want to get banned from Twitter. Obviously, it happened in the end anyway. Yeah. But at first, I put his street name. Then I put his house number. And then, and, and then when guys turned up at his house, I listen, I had to fly some friends of mine from Vegas to L.A. Like, I had to spend money on this shit. This, this took time out of my life. When he looked out the window and saw the SUV, then he starts apologizing on the internet. Like, oh, bitch. Welcome to the real world. Worlds have consequences. And it wasn't even hard for me to do. Richard, all I did was I sent some messages to a few private groups I'm in and said, look, cash prize, this guy needs to pay. That's all it was. It wasn't even difficult. And I still haven't even decided. I still might do it, Richard. You know what? I still might do it. I still might litigate him into the fucking ground. Why not? What else have I got to do? I don't like him. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't like him. I told him this You've ends, been warned, this Internet. Ends. I, listen, I'm a, man, I'm a man of honor, right? If I have a problem with anybody and they agree to fight me and they turn up and they beat me, I'll take the L. I'm not petty. I'm not, I can't, I'm not all those guys who can't take the L. If he would have gotten the cage and won, I'd take it. If he would have gotten the cage and lost, I still would have dropped it. But if you're going to say my name and pretend you're going to fight me and then just waste everybody's time, Waste the fight promoter's time. Waste a bunch of idiots on Twitter's time. Everyone pretending this is going to be a thing. No, he deserves to pay. He deserves to pay because words have consequences. Before the internet, if he was talking like he was talking to my face, he would have had serious facial injuries. Siri, and he knows that. Yeah. So, you know what? The what's more that, we talk about that this, Mike the more Tyson I realize, Richard, no, 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 Richard. He has to pay. <laughs> I might have to do it. What's I that? What's that? Uh, what's that, Mike? Mike Tyson line, something along the lines of, you know, social media has people way too comfortable with not getting punched in the face for saying dumb shit. No, but it, that's it. Social media has people far too comfortable with disrespecting each other without yeah. risking getting punched in the face. Because that's the truth. When you're a man, this is the thing with women, right? Women will shout at each other in each yeah. other's faces, and it doesn't really cross their mind unless they're quite ghetto to get to get physical. But as a man, you yeah. don't raise your voice without understanding there's a chance it's about to become a physical confrontation. Mm -hmm. So you're very, very selective and careful with how you speak to other men and when you raise your voice. Social media has changed all of that. And, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting. We talk about anti-fragility a lot. Yes. And we talk about becoming a sovereign individual and becoming a man who is to some degree hard to hurt. But if yes. you're going to be that guy, you also need an offense, don't you? Right. Well, you, you, yeah, I mean, if you open your mouth and say something, you better have something to back it up is the way that I've always positioned. Like I would like I would never take on somebody that I know that could easily destroy me. Right. I, I mean, nor, you know nor would I say anything like, would I go on a campaign and, you know, like up against somebody like, I don't know, Elon Musk and say that he doesn't know what he's doing in his business and I could run it better and he's a Muppet and blah, 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 sort of thing. Right. I wouldn't because clearly he's more successful than I am. Right. So you've taken this personally. By the way, has it always been this way whenever you've set up fights, you know, in the past? Because you've done over 70 fights, I think now. Right. Yeah, eight, oh, I've had 87 fights now. Has there like always been, you know, that back and forth leading up to it? Or is it? You know what? Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't, there isn't man. I've got, I've got some very good friends who, who I fought with. Sometimes it can be very gentlemanly. It can be like, yeah. hey, this will be good for our careers. All right, bro. Yeah, shake hands. Cool. See you in a month. Like it can be quite cool or it can be like this. Like right. if he really wanted to fight me, it didn't even have to be a negative thing. He could have come along and respectfully challenged me. Like it could have all been a very respectful thing. Yeah. The guy's just an idiot. But the, but the broader point is the point of the internet now. We live in a world now where everyone wants to run their mouth all the time without any kind of repercussion. And I think that we're living in a kind of strange period where 
warfare hasn't gone fully digital, but in the next 10 to 20 years, it's going to be pure digital warfare. Like mm -hmm. the way they're trying to lock us down and separate countries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to be pure digital warfare. So even the networks I, I consulted to, to get the information on this guy, it's something I've been constructing and working on for a while because I understand that whether I'm doing business with somebody or whether somebody pisses me off on Twitter, maybe you're going to need an offense sooner or later. And it's good to have an offense that you can quickly deploy, isn't it? I, there's were, no, Colty's not, Colt, sorry, not Colty. That's not his yeah. name. Colton Dobson from Huntington Beach, California is not a special person. He's nothing. He's nobody. Anybody could run their mouth to me. I can do the same thing to them. I've turned up at dude's houses before. I put it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do yeah. this. Yeah, I saw that on the uh, conversation you had with uh, Tom Segura on your mom's house when you broke it. That was hilarious, by the way. If you guys haven't seen the podcast with Andrew and Tom Segura and his wife, I don't think I've laughed. I... I probably laughed harder at Andrew dealing with Tom's wife than I have watching Tom stand up. And I like Tom as a stand up comic. <laughs> yeah, you know what? They were actually as well. To be fair to them, they were so cool. Cause, yeah, because they were they were they were kind of like enemy. They were kind of making fun of me. And my yeah, they made fun of you on one of your vid. I actually had the same thing too because I had one with uh, me and Aubrey Huff, who's the baseball player, and they took one of my clips in one of their segments and they broke it down. I haven't responded to it or anything like that, but I. You know, but I've seen them do that to quite a few people now. Yeah, no, but they were so nice in person. They were 100%. They yeah, were it cool. yeah, it was a great Yeah, it was a great conversation. So um, okay, so back to this whole, like, how winners win and, like, what it takes to win at war sort of thing. Because a lot of people don't understand this. Um, you know, there's some that are, uh, like, here in a super chat. Somebody says here, Ryan Stone doesn't believe Andrew actually brought SUVs to Colty's house. Could you please set the record straight, Andrew? Oh, no. Oh, not Ryan Stone. If Ryan, if Ryan Stone has a negative opinion, what are, not Ryan Stone. I think he's the most important guy in the world, Ryan Stone. Give a fuck about Ryan Stone. If it, listen, I'm not even going to comment on Ryan Stone. I know he's a friend of yours, et cetera, et cetera. Me and him have gone back and forth, blah, blah, yeah. blah. I don't give a fuck what Ryan Stone believes. Ryan Stone does not pass the six-foot test. He's not even a man. So I don't give a fuck what Ryan Stone says. Ryan Stone is not, Ryan Stone's not of interest to me. Why else so, would he have capitulated so quickly if there was no one outside of his house? That's Think exactly where I was going to take it back to because clearly the strategy worked. I mean, you've got a guy who's got a reputation on Twitter. I mean, the way that I would define Colty Bra as uh, somebody that purports to be very successful in e-commerce. He has a screenshot of his sales. I know a few people that have bought his course uh, learning how to do e-commerce, and they say that it's good. Um, he looks like a big dude. He looks like, you know, typical Chad chisel draw, you know, blonde hair sort of guy. Um, and he posts about interesting stuff, but I was, but I was surprised how fast it was all let's fight your pencil neck geek or that there was something along that lines in a, in like a DM thread, which we can't show because Andrew's not on Twitter anymore and Colt, you know, deleted the thread and it, whatever, like who cares? Like you guys that have seen it know that it happens. Just trust as we discuss this, that this is a general flow of things. I was actually surprised that he folded, right? Because he had talked a good talk for so long on, on Twitter. And then it was just like, oh, this isn't going to oh, happen. Yeah, yeah. Andrew and I yeah. had a conversation oh. and we've worked things out. And then you did the screenshot of the origin. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I don't, listen, I don't give a fuck what Ryan Stone says. Of all the people on earth who don't matter, he's, he's, he's up there. There was people outside his house. He looked out his window and he cracked himself. That's exactly what happened. I flew some friends from Vegas. Look, there's 10 million Romanians outside of Romania. I got friends everywhere. I flew some dudes. And I'm not saying they were going to shoot them in the head or nothing. But it's just it's just a message. It's presence. Not a, every it's every presence. time you go you outside you put, your house, you put like employees. four big guys that are over six foot on somebody's front lawn. Yeah, in just a, a bunch in of dudes in a truck. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you so did the what, same thing in the UK when you had that right? guy on Twitter running his mouth too, right? And But here's the thing. He, he actually made the right decision because... Like he'd sit there and go, okay, these guys are probably not going to shoot me on site, right? Because it's too documented and everyone's going to go to jail. But even if I call the police on them, they've not committed a crime. So mm. nothing's going to happen to them. So am I just going to accept that every single time I leave my house for the rest of my life, there's people who work for Tate who might follow me or know, or watch me or be here? Yeah. Or what about my mom or my sister? It's uncomfortable. It's mm. extremely uncomfortable, right? Yeah, if I decide yeah, yeah. to do it to Ryan Stone's little pokey ass, he's going to be very, very uncomfortable. It's not a very, very comfortable situation to be in. So he did the right thing. He realized it escalated beyond a, beyond a scenario he could pr properly contain. And he and he didn't like it. And he pussied out, which he made the right decision. He had no choice. He had no recourse at that point. He lost completely and utterly. 
I think anybody in their right mind would would send a tweet when you see dudes outside your house. I think you'd be like, okay, all right, all right. I was only fucking, I was only playing games. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I mean, is his e-commerce brand real? No, that's a lie. Bunch of shit. I know that for a fact. He ain't got no e nine-figure e-commerce brand. Dude's a web developer. So it's the guys, he ain't even rich. I mean, is he jacked? Yeah, he takes a few bit of gear, a bunch of cocaine. He goes to MMA class twice a week. Yeah. I know who he trains with. And all the pictures of him doing homosexual work, because that's what he was doing. He was doing a bunch of gay for pay stuff. A bunch of gays were worshiping him for money. All those pictures of him doing that on his gay profiles are on their way to his MMA gym. Along with, listen, they were all, they were all going to be in the legal letter to his father. All his homosexual stuff. I ain't playing games with people. I ain't playing games. If Ryan Stone wants the picture from 21 Con of what time he had two drinks and collapsed like a little girl. If he wants that everywhere, I could do the same thing. It's like, I've got all of it. I've got all of it. It's just, I just have to say a name. Like, Ryan Stone ain't even his real fucking name. You think I don't know his name? People just need to so, shut up about me. Don't so, just leave me alone. I, <laughs> I have a bunch of time and a bunch of money. I'm that guy. Just, just leave me in Romania. And just, so just do your thing with other is, people. This is like biblical level of strategic thinking. And your old man was a chess master. I mean, some, some people that don't know who you are or might be newer to this conversation, they probably don't know this. But your father was a chess master. He was a very good strategic thinker. You also played chess when you were young. Did did that play a significant role in the strategic, like mathematical? Like, because when you win or lose chess, you take ownership for it. A checkmate is a checkmate, a draw is a draw, you know, whatever happens, happens sort of thing. But as you play the game, you go through the motions and you're left with options. And right. did, did this level of thinking come from playing chess? Was this something that your father instilled in you? Like, where did you learn how to do this? Yeah, absolutely. You need to you need to identify weaknesses, right? Because everybody has them. To you have to know degree. your opponent, yeah. You need to identify weaknesses and you need to prepare, right? So especially especially with the culty thing, even before, even though I, I knew he wouldn't sign the contract, right? But even before the contract was sent, I was already preparing all of the options in case he didn't. Mm. If he would have signed it, I wouldn't have done the things I did, right? I wouldn't, it's the I same way you play chess. Play I mean, play. you look at the pieces and you're like, I have the option of these moves here and absolutely. you've got them ready to go I, should you need to, to deploy correct. them. Correct. And I also have I also have an amazing network of individuals and people I work with who have fantastic ideas. Like I, mm. I, I have very good friends who have a lot of influence and a lot of power and a lot of money. And if yeah. I say, look, this guy's upset me, they don't ask why. It's not like, oh, does he deserve it? I, I think I put a tweet up on my account, which is now banned. And I said the true mark of a of a friend is as follows. And I'll I'll tell you this story. It's a very quick story, but in a club, I saw a fight and a guy got punched. And his friends all like ran over and started asking the guy who, who got punched. They were asking him, why did he hit you? Why did he hit you? Like, like why did it happen? Mm -hmm. And I thought, they're not warriors. Because if someone punches my friend, I, I'm going to go. I'm just going to just, I'm in now. I'm just going to go over to whatever the situation is and start smacking everybody until there's bodies on the floor. And we'll find out why later. I don't, I don't care why he hit my brother or my friend. Everyone has to pay first. Then we'll find out, right? So to, to some people are just war-minded and some people aren't. And 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 that's a little analogy that gives it. But this guy, man, this guy wasn't ready for it. I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. I think the internet gets people very, very comfortable with a bunch of garbage. But I really try and just keep myself to myself. But if people really want to start on me and pick, me, pick on me and use my name for clout, eventually, sooner or later, I'm just going to make them regret it because I have too much resource. And all of my friends are exactly the same. So the point I was making earlier is if I tell my friends someone's upset me, they're not going to say, does he deserve to have his house taken from him? They're going to say, oh, right. someone's up to that tape. Then let's go. That, that's who we are as men. It's that, on. That's, it's on. It's on. Yeah, that's a lost art. I mean, I was talking about this at one point in one of the podcasts, but I mean, you want a circle of brothers, of men that you can rely on. Guys that, you know, like if I were to show up on their front porch at three o'clock in the morning with a shovel and a body in my trunk. They'd be like, all right, well, like, where are we going? It's not questioning or calling anybody or reporting you. It's like, what do you need right. me to do? That's that's what you want with your inner circle. And I think that's incredibly, I mean, it's a lost art. It's something that used to exist. I don't think it exists as much as it used to in the past. So it's one of the reasons why I like talking to you, Andrew, about stuff like this is you've you've got a way of thinking and dealing with things that most people ignore or avoid or they're scared of, you know, dealing with, right? It's, 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 it's frightening. It's too much, you know, is this guy going to whatever? Um, I wanted to talk a, a little bit more about the strategy that you used and share a, a personal story that I have, because I dealt with something similar to this um, 
Yep. I don't know. It was maybe about 15 years ago, right? So I used to have these three people that used to work with me. Two of them were employed with me. One of them was working with, with one of the other guys. And we were working on a project and I would go over to the other guy's house. His wife would be there. We'd have a conversation. We'd talk business. Food was ordered. You know, she'd hang out for a bit, but leave. Long story short, they ended up um, doing some un underhanded things, which I can't talk about because of the settlement. But similar to how Andrew dealt with this, you know, scenario, one of the strategies that I use when I had to go legal on this and I did have to go legal was I named the guy's wife, right? Yep. She wasn't going to be on the business contract, but she was at the house and she was tied into the conversations from time to time. Um, it was, it was a strategy that my lawyer um, talked to me about at length and I got further counsel on it as well, but it ended up working and he ended up settling simply because the missus was involved and she didn't want to get dragged into the lawsuit, have to go to court, look bad on, on public record because of her profession. There's all this other stuff, you know, too now, but you've like, when it comes to conflict, okay guys, and this is true for anything, you're going through the divorce machine, you're dealing with a business strategy. I don't think anything yep. should be off the table. Okay. You want to win, you want to play to win. That's what playing to win looks like. You know, Cobra Tate is your, is your pinnacle example of this. Like this is the alpha God sort of strategy that we're talking about right now, right? Like why would you mess with a championship kickboxer publicly and then back down that quickly, right? Clearly what you did worked. And, and, and you, you know, you nailed it because we said earlier about how my boys will go to war for me without thinking, right? And no one's going to ask any whys. As soon as I said that man upset me, nobody was asking me what he did. Everyone was just out to hurt him as much as possible, right? And it's kind of the same because if you don't have that network, they also won't take fire for you the same. So you just nailed it, right? His wife, he settled because his wife, you instilled cowardice. You instilled fear inside of his own camp because now his wife is in his ear. Oh, I don't need this. Just settle, blah, blah, blah. That, that's another problem. If you don't have a serious circle of brothers, if they attack your brothers or the people who are close to you, they're going to turn on you very, very quickly. And that's another thing you need to consider. Like if, if someone were to try and tie my brother into something that involved me, my brother would be like, good, because it does involve me. Good. Like he'd be happy for it. But most people are not like that. And, and that's where it's more and more important. We, we talk about a lot of things in, in this kind of space and this side of Twitter, but they all kind of tie back to the same thing. And they all tie back to masculine networks and masculine support systems in which you have <laughs> men of honor and, and to a degree. Real men of honor to, is what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Because men used to be bound by something, Richard. They're either bound under right. a flag of a country or bound by language or bound by the need for survival. We used to be bound together. And if you don't have brothers that you're at least bound to by something, you know, if you're all just in it purely for your own interest and you meet, you know, three times a, a year and you have a bit of wine, whatever, whatever, that's different. You need to. And this is one of the things I, I really do thank, uh, you know, like my, my entire life has, has been full of tribulation. But uh, I, I, I really do thank the, the, my upbringing and the fact that I grew up in a, in a very impoverished place because the reason gangs exist are for survival, man. Mm. This is why people join them. This is the, like, I grew up with needing guys who I knew would fight next to me. And just because I have money, I, nothing about my mindset has changed. It, it's exactly the same. And, and I think a lot of people try and pretend it's not real. Like guys like Colton or... Ryan Stone or whoever want to sit there and pretend that Twitter is the be all and end all of the world. It certainly isn't. Twitter's a website. There's real people. I'm a real person. I'm sovereign. I exist. One day you might see me. <laughs> it's the guy next to you prepared to take an ass kicking along with you. Because if he's not, why is he even your friend? You know, like th this goes beyond. So Colton Dobson was a fun little thought experiment. And it was, you know, it was fun for me to mess with. But it goes and shows, it goes to show everything you're saying about the people who are close to you, they're either on, firstly, they need to be on your side, but secondly, they're your weakness. Mm -hmm. Look at what I did to Scott Adams. You see Scott Adams' wife? Yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah, that was great. Can I uh, tell the story? So, so Andrew, so Andrew and Scott Adams, and if you know who, who, who Scott Adams is, I mean, he's on Twitter. He's very popular. He does coffee shows and blah, 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 writes books. And he's married to a younger, very attractive woman. She's, she's what, like 25, 30? Something like that, yeah. And, he, and he's got to be into his 50s, maybe even 60. He's significantly I mean, older than him. Yeah, I, went, I mean, looking at that relationship, I knew something wasn't right. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like right off the get go. I mean, he's 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 neither he's neither alpha <laughs> or beta bucks. But um, yeah, he was running his mouth, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a a quick like twenty five second screen video on your phone of her and you exchanging DMs with hearts and emojis and come on over sort of thing. Just, you know, just like that, you know, you this go. is, this is the man's wife, right? Because he was running his mouth. So, I mean, it's, it's beyond me why people try to flick boogers at you. I mean, you've clearly proven yourself, but I guess it gets lonely at the top and stuff like this needs to continue to happen and make sure that you maintain your uh, crown, I, I suppose. Of, right? A lot of people aren't, a lot, a lot of people aren't introspective enough to, to truly understand how weak they are. Like I have genuinely done serious work on myself. And I've also consulted with some of my friends, which are extremely high level individuals. We've done a lot of work to see exactly how vulnerable we are. I know my vulnerabilities, right? I know what they are. I've analyzed myself. I know what you can find out about me online. I know my weaknesses in regards to females or friends or children or offspring. I, I've literally sat and analyzed myself. If you were to mm. attack me, because I'm not scared. Listen, there's been points in my life where I had real people trying to kill me. And I'm talking about real people. I'm talking about Albanian gangsters with, with murder charges. Mm -hmm. So I'm not scared about Ryan Stone on Twitter. He's a nobody. I've been through it for real. So I've analyzed my life. Most people haven't. Scott Adams has never sat there and thought, what's my weakest point? Well, it's clearly my wife who doesn't love me. I mean, that's a pretty obvious one to me. I looked at the dude and thought, okay, that's how I piss him off. <laughs> that's just going to take 10 seconds. Boom, boom, how many boom. how many people do you think actually go through a risk a risk assessment to see how vulnerable they are, like what their weak points are? I'd say it's really low. I don't think anybody does because just like nearly everything else in the world, when people identify they have a problem, then they feel implored to act, and people are scared of action, so they like the ostrich tactic. Oh, it's fine, and Fair hide their understand. heads. They don't want to sit there and go, okay, what dirt on me really exists? Okay. Where's my weak points? Okay, who would actually turn on me? Okay, who would fold under pressure? Okay, which 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 of my business interests could be seriously damaged by, I mean, even me and the way I make money, I know you can't really damage me. Oh, you're going to say the casino owner's a bad guy, are you? Oh, yeah, I'm sure no one's going to go to my casino. Who gives a shit, right? Like, so I know my weaknesses, right? And even, even like a, a few people have been clever and tried. They've messaged some of my girlfriends and tried to get me caught cheating and all this other crap. That's all that doesn't work because my girls know the game. So I have all myself, my, myself's pretty tied up, but most people aren't. Colty never considered for a second. He didn't even know his weaknesses. If you don't even know where you're going to get hit, it's going to hurt twice as hard. <laughs> you know? Hey, you know, again, dude, like I was impressed with how, how much mouth was run. I was like, okay, well, this is going to happen then. And then how quickly it just went quiet and disappeared. And Andrew and I had a conversation and worked it all out. That was that was that was rapid, man. Like that was impressive. That that was impressive. He looked out the window. He shit himself. His mother looked out the window. She shit herself. His whole family's in fear, and he has to come to an end. Interesting. Like, what else is it going to be? Yeah. Let's let's um let's hop over to these super chats to see what people are all saying here because uh, there's a few chiming in. James says Tate has been a podcast here. Dude's on an actual legend. Yeah. There's uh again watch. Your mom's house podcast with Andrew. I promise you're going to laugh. Uh, Eric says, thank you, Andrew, for providing hookup. You're a true G. You know, I'm ordering my new 100K car in the middle of Toronto lockdown. What did you get? Yeah, what are you getting, my friend, man? Listen, if you, ha listen, if you have any <laughs> money in the bank, spend all of it on a car. And, spend and, all and, of it. And, so it's the best thing to the spend way, your money on. Spend it all. And by the way, in the Toronto market right now, in this price point, there's very little on the market, man. There's not much going on. Um, we've got serious supply shortages in the exotic car space. Uh, Terry says, Andrew, how much conversation and time needed to be spent on wife LTR? I know you've mentioned all you do is work, party, come out, have sex and sleep. How do you bond with your women if that's at all? Yeah, of course. Of course, I bond with my woman. I want to make something clear. A lot of people have this mis. mis understanding about me that I live a loveless life and my girls are just scared of me, et cetera. My relationships at home look pretty much like any other loving, happy relationship. My women love me and I love them and we're nice to each other. And we are bonded by common drive towards my goals because I'm the man and I'm trying to conquer the world. So she finds her bonding with me and her mutual interest in my success. When Genghis Khan was conquering the earth, do you think he had to come home and talk knitting with a bitch or did he come home and talk about the fact he conquered the earth? 
That's what she was like. Oh, well, I'm with Genghis. Oh, oh, you murder people today. Okay, Genghis, good job. So, like, you want to bond with your wife? You need to come home with a story to tell. You need some conquest. You're probably not doing shit. You're coming yeah. home with nothing to fucking talk about. That's your fault. That ain't her fault. That's your problem. If you were doing enough interesting, then you'd be bonded fine. Trust me, I can come in the house, give a three-second rendition, rendition of my day and the problems I've solved and the bullets I've dodged, and then it's on. Like, there's, 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 that's, that's about being a man. Too many, too many people in this space think they think they need to go to the woman and change the woman. I promise you, if you're actually the man, it ain't that hard. It really isn't. Yep. It's been said many times, women would rather share a high value alpha than be straddled with a faithful loser. Uh, Enrique, who's also a fighter, by the way, he's an up and comer. I've, I've talked to him a few times, says, uh, shows the power and value of uh, networking. Thank you for all your resources, gentlemen. You're welcome, dude. I'm sure Andrew's. And, and, but this is it, right? You need to know who's worth knowing. I yeah. know if I need, I know if I needed some information in Canada and I were to say to Rich, look, Rich, this, 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 could you help me out? He'd help me out. If yeah. he had something go down in Eastern Europe, he'd say, look, this has happened in, in, in Hungary or Romania. What do you got on the guy? 20 minutes, boom, done. You need to know important people. And you're only going to know important people. Life's a value exchange, right? You're going to get Correct. value from people when you can give value to people. And if you're going through life and you don't know anybody important, it's probably because you're not very important yourself. And, and that's, it's all, once again, completely your fault. I truly believe, not to get too spiritual, to preach too much, but I truly believe the life that every, every single one of us lives is the life that we have accepted and constructed for ourselves. You are living a life that is completely head to toe your fault. If you want it to be better, you'd be more uncomfortable with what you currently have to get it to the point where it would need to be. It's all Amen. your fault. If you're sitting there and going, oh, you know, my wife's a three. I play Tekken on Twitch for pennies. My name's Ryan Stone. If your life sucks. Then that's Dude, your stop fault. Picking on, that's stop picking on Ryan. There's no one else is, right? <laughs> you just have to accept it. All right, let's let's get off the Ryan thing. Uh, Reeve, hey Rich, I'm 20 and was involved in a house fire last year. My house got destroyed, lost everything I own. Just want to thank you for your content. It has helped me to bounce back, man. Much love. You're welcome, dude. Glad it's been useful. Uh, there's a few other supers here. Good uh, content from my friend, Mr. Bosker. Uh, basic concept. Uh, my buddy, Paul. Uh, don't start crap you aren't willing to finish and don't pretend that you are that you say behind a screen doesn't have consequences great show absolutely dude you know um what? accountability it's a, really, it's a really good one but you know what like you know what reminds me of this do you ever play hold'em poker do you ever play hold'em no i've never been a poker player i played a lot of blackjack and rapid blackjack though okay so sometimes i play hold'em right and i've got a kind of okay hand and you put a bit of money in hmm. you know you put a couple hundred in whatever and then some guy raises you like 10 grand and you're sitting there going, why did I start this? Why did, why did I start this stupid? Now I got, am I going to go 10 grand in on this crappy hand, seven and queen, some, some junk. And, and that's a really important point. I ignored Culty for three years. Mm -hmm. I ignored him and all his stupid digs for years. I'm a, I'm an all or nothing guy. I, I either just basically ignore you. I might reply a little or just block you, whatever. But if mm. I'm if the second I decide to go to war, it must be won. Mm. It's, it's blitzkrieg. You, you can't half do anything. It's better to do nothing than to half do something. So he, he's, he absolutely nailed it. Don't start something you weren't prepared to finish. If I wasn't prepared to literally impoverish his entire bloodline, I wouldn't have done anything. But the fact is I was. I was, I was ready to instruct my son upon coming of age to find his children and litigate them into poverty once again. This was going to be generational. His great-grandson would be eating scraps from a trash can, talking about the day his great-grandfather messed with Andrew Tate. It was never going to end. Never. And that's the point. It was all or nothing. So if you're, and this is a, a lesson for life, you got to keep this in mind. Let's think, if you're ever in a bar, I, I say in a lot of my podcasts how I try and avoid street fights. I really, I really avoid them at my absolute best. There's been a whole bunch of times I've walked away. People have been calling me a pussy and I walk away mm -hmm. because I know once it goes down, someone's going to die. And it, it might be me. I'm not saying I'm Superman, right? But you, you, it's either for me, it's nothing. But if it's on, if there's two of them and there's a knife on the table, I'm just stabbing people. I'm not punching nobody. I don't know how many friends they got. I don't know if they got weapons. It's, it's all or nothing. 
I'm, I'm that guy. So you have to be like that in your mind. If you're going to go, you got to go for real or don't do anything. 100%. Uh, Paul follows up. Uh, LOL. And don't worry, I'm driving while I watch this. Paul, Paul's, um, you'll probably see it on, on, on the gram at some point this weekend. We're doing a bit of a retreat. Uh, me and Paul and a few other guys uh, this weekend up uh, nice. up north. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Damien Platts. Uh, people don't put, that's, uh, Ron is Romanian, isn't it? Yes, Ron is, is Romanian. That's, that's about seven or eight dollars. Uh, people don't put enough emphasis on the importance of having a powerful network. It's true, guys. A power, a useful network. I mean, listen, I know Paul, not Paul. I know that uh, Andrew has his war room. I've got my own community. Um, people will, will, will flick boogers at these things, but they don't understand the power of the network and what happens unless you're inside it and you see the use of it and you see the connections that are made and, and, and the work that's done beyond that. I know, um, cause I've talked to Andrew privately a few times that there's a lot of useful stuff that happens in men's communities, especially high level men's communities where you have top shelf men. I mean, if you're doing some basic shit, um, Absolutely. you know, doing like a book club or you've got like a, a video game raid on World of Warcraft or some shit. That's pretty entry level stuff. The kind of things that Andrew and I talk about to our guys in our community are very high level. And to be able to make a few phone calls and say, hey, take this, you know, take care of this, that or the other thing. You want those people in your inner circle. You absolutely want them. Their network is very, very powerful. Uh, Eric says, Tate, you're a master Completely. strategist. Go ahead. Uh, no, but l let's look at very recently GME and GameStop. Look at how Reddit took on the, the hedge funds. Right. People are going to sit there and laugh at your network or my network when a bunch of Redditors got together and, and bankrupted a hedge fund. Right. That's the power of networking. Yes. That's absolutely the power of networking. That's all it's ever been. And, and you know, it's it, I love the idea of being able to go to a group of people who I can trust with, with a problem before I have to go to Google or any other crap and get it solved, right? Anyone who's going to sit there... The truth is anyone's going to sit there and, and, and make fun of networks. They're just self-conscious and they don't believe they're going to be accepted into a network because they're a self-conscious individual. That's all. They usually have, you know, you have value to provide. You yeah. want, the first thing you want to do is find other high value guys. That's exactly. all you want to do. Exactly. They usually protest because they can't afford the admission or they think that there's dodgy things. It's, it's, it's usually just because they don't fit in it. And it's like, fine, you know, if you don't fit, then don't fit, but come back, you know, if you want to, when you, when you're a good fit, you know, it's, it's not difficult. Eric, you said one more, you said something really important there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You said about not affording the price of admission. And that's mm -hmm. another thing that I find very interesting is that when you speak to a person who is of low quality, right. And when I say low quality, I don't even mean income because I'm from a low income background. I mean, a low quality person, they think in terms of win lose, because mm -hmm. their whole life, they've either been scamming someone or being scammed. So when they look at a network like yours or mine, they sit there and go, well, maybe it's a scam. Maybe he's going to take my money and I get nothing back. What happens when you meet with elite people is we all think in terms of win-win. It's a different mentality, right? So the win-win mentality is me and him are going to work together and we're both going to win. There doesn't have to be a loser. Amongst the elites, when elites work together, it's always win-win. The pharma company and the government are working together right now. It's win-win. Don't worry about it. Nobody's losing, right? Except the people outside of the transaction. And this is what you'll have. A lot of people who flick boogers and networks are just people who are low quality and think in terms of win-lose. They go, well, if I pay this fee, he's won, so I must lose. That's absolutely not the case. If you pay to join Richard's network or my network or any network or whatever it is, that's okay. The person who got you to join may win, but you're going to win in exchange also because you're around high value individuals. This is how the elites have stayed the elite. It's it's like a tornado. It's an upward spiral of endless winning. Win, 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 win. When a bunch Tides of lifting together, all the ships. See, here's the thing, right? right? I mean, like I've got a guy that I can think of off the top of my head in my group that I could, like I won't even call him. I won't text him. We use a um, app that is, uh, it's untraceable and the messages, you know, disappear. Let's just, I'm not even gonna say what the app is, but, you know, if I need to make a problem go away, then I would message him. I've got my code name on it. He's got his. And then, you know, you carry on through it. But you're not going to have access to these tools because you don't have access to the toolbox. And if you want access to the toolbox, you have to pay the admission. Like if you're not, you want to be the dumbest guy in a room, basically, when it comes to a network, you don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. 
You want to be the new guy. You want to be right. you know, the guy that shows up. And when you show up, you don't want to show up asking all the time either, right? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You, you need to show up being useful. Like I'm sure, you know, these guys that you mentioned in Las Vegas that you drop a call on, you fly them out and they, and they show up and they make their presence known. They're probably not senior members, my age, you know, sort of thing. They're probably younger, newer guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And this is the thing. And you yeah. nailed it as well in terms of asking. A lot of people don't understand the value of networking because, listen, when I was young and broke, I would have done anything to just be around important people. You have to know your place. And, and also by providing value, you learn a lot. Like, it's amazing to me, like people watch movies and stuff. You watch the old gangster movies. There's always a new guy who joins and he earns their trust by doing things. And then he, he moves his way up. And then, but then you'll get in, in this modern world, a new guy will think, oh, well, just jump in and start asking people for things. That's not how it works. You have to provide value to give value. And you're going to learn a lot of lessons when you provide value. Like if, if someone important enough comes along to me with a problem, I would love to help them out because it will also help me learn. It'll help me, you know, like you grow as an individual when you think that way. So yeah, it's it's absolutely a mindset that the elites have. It's a win-win mindset that that low-level people just don't seem to have. Eric says, Tate, you're a master strategist. Sun Tzu, The Art of War, Personified. That's a good book. Make sure you read that. Read The 48 Laws of Power. It's got some useful tools in it as well. You should connect with Marquette recently on F and F, Fresh and Fit, I'm guessing, from the Saint and the Sinner. He's your brother from another mother. Do you know who Marquette is? I do not, but I'll check him out. Check them out. I've I've never heard of them either. Uh, action movie clip says, "Hey, Rich and Tatum, twenty years old, living in America with only fifteen hundred in my bank account, working nine to five. What's the best way to start making more money and how I get around high level into uh, Okay, you want to take this one? Well, you have online networks, but I'll tell you a really easy hack because I've seen a lot of Romanian kids do this, and I thought it was pretty clever. Have you ever been to? So, what happens in in Eastern Europe if you go to a car meet? These kids turn up, these 19-year-old kids with these amazing cameras, and they offer to take pictures of the cars, and they often offer to take pictures of you and the cars, and, and they build these Instagram pages of like uh, car fan pages. And I was talking to one of the kids, and I was like, hey, why why do you do this? Like, you, you, you're you a car fan or whatever. And he goes, no, I just want to meet important guys. And I thought that was really clever. Mm -hmm. I thought, you're 18. He, he took his, instead of going to uni, he spent all his uni money on a camera. And now he's hanging around all the millionaires taking pictures and everyone's hanging out with him talking to him because he takes their photos and he's getting like photography jobs and video editing jobs and jobs on the slide. I'm like, you're making more money than your parents. I mm -hmm. thought that was pretty clever, but that's no, just that, a little, it's pretty smart, no? Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And I've often said to guys, you know, if you can join a car club, a, a car community, I mean, obviously you're not going to get in with the hypercars and the supercars, but if you've got a few bucks to you know, rub together and you can buy a 20 or $30,000 decent you know a uh, performance car a bmw m uh, amg mercedes like something like that um start going to those clubs there's going to be people at those events with supercars with doors that go up there's going to be people that you might have an opportunity to photograph you know like andrew said that's a great way to get into it i mean the big mistake that most guys make and i'll tell you this because i get it all day long i'm sure you get this too andrew is can i pick your brain can i get 15 minutes of your time hey can i ask you a question oh my and gosh, yeah. i mean like you've got a entry level club that people can get into i think it's called the hustlers university it's like 50 bucks a month correct yeah so i mean there's that the, the price to entry is relatively low or you could just show up to places and make yourself useful and instead of asking can i pick your brain because what rich people usually hear is this guy wants to steal my time and pick my pocket OK, they don't they don't think to themselves yeah. like, you know, OK, I need to help this guy because he's got nieces, nephews, sons, daughters. He's got family members. He's got, you know, his 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 friends, kids that he tries to help out. So if you're a nobody to them and they don't and they don't know you show up being useful first, helping them solve a small problem, offer them a photo shoot with their car. You know, that day, if that's something that you can do, you know, that's one thing that you can do. But don't show up asking, show up giving to begin with if you know you want to start with something like that. Uh, we got life, math, money in the Completely. house. You've got to give value. you got to give value. That's what I thought was really cool about the camera thing because he turns up taking Very. photos. He's giving really. value. you got to give value Very first because Richard nailed it. There's nothing more annoying than people going, hey, have you got five minutes? Not for you. I don't know who you are. Yeah. And, like, and, I, and I guarantee you'd waste my time. I guarantee it'd be the biggest waste of time. Yeah. Like, no, absolutely not. They always used to say in the um, entrepreneurs uh, groups that I was in, if you're not paying, you're not paying attention. So don't expect to show up and like ask somebody for an hour of their time for free. Like that's why people charge money for coaching or for consults because their time is valuable. It can be used 
starting lawsuits and some guy across the world on Twitter that's running his mouth. There's different things you can do with your time, right? Um, got a quick super here from my boy Dragos in Romania. Um, Dominic says, Andrew Rich, both of you are the father I never had. Uh, Andrew says, Tate, what words, movies, or images do you play in your mind to generate singular focus and energy to win, especially when you are starting out? Tate is dropping wisdom today. The smart will find a way to learn more from this man among men. What's your word on that? I, I really don't think enough people have a, a duty to their bloodline and to their last name. I, 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 I never really truly needed to visualize much to get motivation to be to be something respected. And I, I think I grew up with a when I grew up around my father, when we used to go to chess tournaments, every time people would start saying, oh, Tate's here, Tate's here. I'd literally hear fear attached to the name Tate from a young age. Right. Mm -hmm. So I understood that if I'm going to walk around with this last name, it has to be worth something and I have to make it something. I don't need headphones in the gym. I don't need, like, I'll run 20 miles. I don't need music. I have my own internal dialogue. I don't need a movie. I don't need to visualize anything. I'm Andrew Tate and I refuse to fail. And that's got to be something you, you have to have a duty to yourself and to your bloodline. It's got to be a conscious decision you make as an individual as to whether you're a winner or a loser. You have to make that choice. And so many people have chosen to be losers. And it's almost like they, they try and pretend they haven't. But losing slowly, losing slowly is still losing. If you're playing a chess My game favorite is when people choose to lose. You know, they just opt out. Oh, I'm just not playing the game. Yeah, exactly. And, but if you're playing a game, if you're if you're playing a game of chess and they're slowly grinding you down, even though you may delay the inevitable, it's still a loss on your record. Slowly losing is still losing. Sitting there playing it safe. And just slowly being ground down as you get a bit fatter and your wife gets a bit uglier and just, you know, not really getting anywhere bit by bit. You're still, you still chose to lose. You have to make a choice as an individual. And if you truly choose to be a winner, you don't need any kind of motivation. I be, wake being, up, I wake up poor, and I'm Question. So being poor, being sexless, being fat, being whatever, this is all a choice. Yeah. I mean, for most people, for like 99% of the population, there's some people that, you know, are, it's well beyond their control, but for the most, most part. Yeah. I think if you live in the Western world, it's absolutely a choice. Listen, if you're born in Tanzania and you're poor, fine. I'll accept that. That's hard. Right. If you're in Iran with international sanctions and you can't get a bank account. Yes. Fine. That's hard. You're in the Western world. Right. And I, I refuse to believe if you dedicated hundred percent of your energy towards the right knowledge and the right networking, you would still be completely flat broke. That is literally a statistical impossibility. You've wasted too much time. So yeah, it's a choice. It's a choice. And the body you walk around the earth in is completely a choice. The food that goes in your mouth is a choice. Whether you go gym or not is a choice. And we talk about being sexless. How are you going to be sexless with the amount of hoes out here? Bruv, sexless. I'm trying to avoid sex. I'm trying to fucking dodge it. I'm going out with a hood on so no one can see who I am. I have to, I have to close my Instagram. There's too many DMs. How are you going to go without pussy? It's, it's insanity. It's absolutely a choice. And that's the thing, a winner's mindset. You need to truly decide to win. And if you truly decide to win, it all goes back to everything we've just been saying. The first thing you're going to do is look in the mirror and go, okay, who are my most important friends? Not, not my funniest friends, not my friends who I play video games with. Who are the most important men I know? Oh, fucking nobody. Well, it needs to change because you're never going to matter by yourself. You're just not going to matter. We got a guy that needs to uh, get permission from his wife here, Andrew. What do you have to say about this? Luke, I know you're watching this. He's the admin. Stanislav Karpov. Can you make sure he's never ever joins, please? Can you ban him? Because I don't I'm not having anybody who listens to their wife in my organization. Yes. Thank That's you. You are now banned about. for life. I get I get messages from people that are like, hey, like, you know, you, I looked at you, your group you know, and I have a question about like, your videos and sort of things like that. Did you have information on this? Is there somebody in this town that I live? I just delete it. I don't even answer. It's like, look, I don't need to fucking answer questions about that. It's crazy. You know what? The, that's probably one of my pet peeves. One of my real pet peeves is that if I'm ever talking to a guy about anything and he mentions what his wife thinks, like I couldn't care less. I'm sitting there talking about some business. Well, my wife says, I've never even met her. Like, I, I don't give a shit. Who's talking to her? Like, why are you regurgitating your parent? Shut up. If you, like, why are you? My wife thinks, I don't, I couldn't give a solitary fuck, my friend, what your wife thinks. I don't, she's probably not even hot. I don't care. You're, you're banned. 
You never, you never even made your way in. You're kicked out. You're kicked out before you even start. Andrew says, Tate, what words, movies, or images you play? Oh, hang on. We already did these ones. Scrolled up. War Room. Uh, yeah, Dorian. Goes me on money. Fuck, man. Guys, slow down. We got we to gotta wrap this up. So let's just stop with the supers. Let me just get through all these. Uh, do, 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 Tate. Um, absolutely important. I just want to make sure I catch up. Okay, so is this one? That was the next one. Network goes beyond money. It's absolutely important for people to see the power of a network. Mutually beneficial, constant exchange of value. I'm alive today because, see, uh, you have to hold your other men, you have to hold men accountable. Um, I don't know if you follow Jack Donovan, Andrew. Have you ever seen his stuff? Yeah, he's, uh, I think I follow him on Instagram. He's not on Twitter, is he? The way of, no, uh, the way of men becoming a barbarian. He's, uh, yeah, he's yeah, a guy that talks about a lot of, you know, like man stuff sort of stuff. And one of the things that stood out when I went through one of his first books was like, men need to hold other men accountable and, and they need to put them through trials and, and tribulations. It's very, very important. Networks are useful. I mean, part of the reasons why winners win is because they surround themselves with other winners. Completely. Because you know what? If you have any kind of self-respect, and a whole bunch, a whole bunch of people nowadays don't have self-respect, right? But if you're around winners and you have any kind of self-respect, you don't want to be the only broke guy. And you don't want to be the only fat guy. You don't you don't want to be the only guy whose life is shit, right? Because you're gonna feel embarrassed. So if you hang around winners, there's a standard that you you're expected to meet, to be to to feel confident within yourself. If you're going to hang around millionaires and you're flat broke, you're not going to feel comfortable. So if you have any kind of self-respect and you surround yourself with the right people, you'll have endless motivation. It's very, very simple. It's not complicated. Kind of big Tony says, Tate, three sore boy worms took down all your accounts. I emailed you the intel. Why don't you reestablish the Orthodox Tate brother missions? Visit them, spread the world. Like you promise on YMH. Friend of yours? I know who took, I know who took my accounts down. Yeah. It's the it's Mike Stutchbury, the guy who I knocked on his door before, who moved house because of me. Now he lives in Germany. I got his new address. There's some other guy, John Goldberg. I know who they are. I'm not going to say too much. Listen, it's all right. Have faith. Can they, can people just have a little bit of faith in me? Can you, can you just chill a little bit and just go? You know what? Tate's got it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Everything's under control. Have yeah, some shut. faith. It's a wonderful day. Beautiful you got a shout out here from uh, Miska. People inside the war room already know what's going to happen. Don't worry you got, about it. You got a shout out here from Miska to some of the boys in your war room. Uh, Sting says, Andrew, where to contact you for pitch? Found a strat in a business model. Makes 150K a year per person. 10 people, 1.5 million. Tested for 6 mil now. You want you want this guy to DM you somewhere? You, I, I, I think you could probably contact Richard inside of his group and me inside of my group. And I'll make one more thing actually very, very clear about networking. I don't do business with anybody outside of my own network. And there's a very- I started doing that this year. I started yeah. doing that this year. Because the culture is different. Yeah. And I, my culture is like, I'm opening casinos. I, I had one of my war room guys who wanted to get involved in a casino. He invested $2.5 million in casino locations. It was a handshake. Like, and, and I've delivered his casinos, done. Like, I love the culture of just me and my boys, we work a certain way. I don't have time for some jackass and his lawyer and wants to mess around. Da, da, da. Sign an NDA. You, you, you want to do, sorry, carry on, sorry. I, I was just joking, sign an NDA before we talk. It's like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's garbage. Yeah. It's garbage. I don't have time for that. So I'm in a very fortunate financial position where I don't need to make more money. So if I go to business with you, it's so you can make a bunch of money. I mean, I might make a bunch of money, but it ain't going to change my life. I don't care. So the one thing I'm not going to do is at, uh, adopt stress or headache or any kind of displeasure in my life. So I like yeah, to do like, business with a very particular culture, and that's the culture of my network. See, see, that's strange to me because, I mean, he's coming at you with a, a pitch for 150K a year per person, 10 people, 1.5, tested for six. So he's basically saying, I've got a $6 million business, but he won't spend a few grand to get in a war room to contact you directly to make that pitch, right? Like, are you serious or not? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't uh, make Seth sense. says the power war room is unmatched. It continues to grow very quickly. This organization assists me in changing my life immensely. Uh, Jared says, Hustlers University is a real deal. Cheers, brother. You can find that on CobraTape.com, I believe. Uh, Mr. DC yeah, Comics. Yeah, we're on uh, Mr. DC Comics says, what are your thoughts about learning from mistakes and how many did you make before you both became successful? Questions for both. 
just watch my videos, guys, and watch Andrew's videos. He's got lots of uh, stories on there. I've got lots of stories. This is a $5 question. We're not going to spend too much time on it. And we're done. Andrew, it's been a pleasure. I didn't want to take up too much time. I know it's late where you are. And um, I just wanted to, you know, hop on, chop it up a little bit about how winners win, uh, share that, you know, example, because I thought it was relevant and recent and good. And I know you've always got a lot of energy behind this, man. Like the thing that I like about you is that I know what I'm going to get with Andrew Tate. I know what I'm going to get. There's there's no question. It's 100 percent Cobra Tate all the time. No, <laughs> no reservations, no apologies, nothing. You know what? You know what? I, I read something. I can't remember who said it, but whoever said it was, it was brilliant. And he said that most people in life are dim lights. They're on, but they're not bright. And he said, because they're trying to conserve energy. And he made a really amazing point. And his point was, you should either be on or off. So like for the three or four hours before this, I was sitting in silence. But now I'm on. And then I'll go back to silence. You should make a choice. You're either on or you're off, right? Too many people are dim lights. They're kind of like floating through. Doo -doo. There, there has to be a time where you're on and a time where you're off. There's go time and there's, and, and there's relax time. And I kind of like that. I learned that at a young age. And I kind of even applied it to fighting. When I was training, I trained like an animal. And then when I stopped training, I try not to even think about the fight. Why? You know? And it's like, it's, it's, that, it's yes or no. Try and be more binary. And if you do that, you seem to have, a, I, I personally have a lot more energy when it's go time. That's that's my personal thing. Don't go anywhere, Andrew. Guys, thanks. Leave a uh, thumbs up and a comment below and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.